Welcome! Today, we're tackling The Fairly Odd Parents, one of Nickelodeon's best animated shows, and probably a huge part of your childhood. But what if I told you that there's more to your favorite childhood show that you probably didn't realize? Fairly Odd Parents has been hiding its dark secrets right in plain sight, and since no one is talking about it, we're going to talk about it now. But before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button. Hey, um, so I found this video on my hard drive. I have no memory of making this. Did you make it? Yeah, I didn't think so. Great, another one. Wow, Fairly Odd Parents. I haven't thought about that show in years. Well, I guess let's watch this thing and see what the heck it is. Let's talk about the real reason Timmy Turner has his fairy godparents, Cosmo and Wanda. The show tries to tell us that Timmy deserves fairy godparents because his life is miserable. He has neglectful parents, an abusive babysitter, and bullies both in and out of school. Fairy World gives godparents to children who need them the most, because their lives are so hard. Or so they say. Anyone could look at Timmy and agree he has a hard life. But is that really the reason he was given fairy godparents? This video will show you that there is another reason, and it's not what you would expect. Oh, so it's one of those dark truth behind the kids cartoon type of videos. Great. I have some opinions on that entire concept. Okay, so if you've been watching my most recent videos, you might have noticed a bit of a trend. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about fandoms and fan theories. Basically, there are a lot of weird and stupid fan theories out there that fall apart under the slightest scrutiny, but people eat them up anyway. It bugs me in a way I can't quite articulate, especially when it's like some giant soulless content farm video. I have no problem with fan theories as a concept, but when I see like a Watch Mojo video that's like top 10 dark theories that'll ruin your childhood, it really gets under my skin for some reason. But I'll bite. Let's watch the rest of this video and see what secret it supposedly reveals about Fairly Odd Parents. Hey, uh, other me, if you can hear me. You better have ironclad evidence for this so-called theory, because I'm about to tear it to shreds. First, let's take a moment to really wonder why Timmy, out of all the kids in the world, got Fairy Godparents. The show says that Timmy is one of the most unhappy kids in the world. But in reality, there are kids who go through a lot worse during most of their lives. Timmy is well-fed, with a roof over his head, goes to school, and has all of life's necessities at home. Yeah, his life isn't great, but it could be a whole lot worse. And look at the other characters who have had fairy godparents throughout the series. Young Mr. Crocker? Remy Buxaplenty? While they do have problems, are these really the saddest kids on Earth? Or is there something more at play? No, look, see, they always do this. These videos never just commit to what they're saying. They always come at it like, I'm just asking questions, and act all wishy-washy about it, because if they came right out and said what they were implying at the beginning, it would sound ridiculous and they'd alienate their audience. So we have to do this little dance until they draw you in enough to believe whatever stupid idea they have coming. Although, yeah, it is kind of weird that kids living in poverty never seem to get fairies. But whatever, let's keep watching. Second, we have to consider Fairy World, the home to all fairy godparents. Why exactly are they providing children with godparents? To make children's lives easier, right? But looking at a typical episode, Timmy has a problem, wishes to resolve it, somehow makes it worse, and then eventually undoes the wish, all while learning a moral or lesson. His life definitely isn't made easier. What would make his life easier is if he could wish to undo his first wish once it goes wrong. But because of the rules, the rulebook that all fairy godparents abide by, Cosmo and Wanda are often prevented from undoing Timmy's first wish. No matter what, there always seems to be an outlandish rule that prevents Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda from resolving their issues in the simplest way. I wish I had my voice back. It says here that all vocal wishes must be made in the voice of the child that the godparents are assigned to. But why? Why write the rules in such a convoluted way? <laughs> that always drove me crazy when I was a kid. Yeah, the show's gotta have conflict somehow, but sometimes it's like, come on. You have to make the wish in your own voice? How contrived can you get? Third, we have to look at the types of wishes that Timmy makes. For example, 
Vicky, his babysitter, is terrible and enjoys tormenting him. It would make sense for Timmy to wish for a better babysitter, or even to make Vicky a better person. But he never does. Why not? Why don't Cosmo and Wanda ever suggest a better way to solve his problems? What's preventing them from actually making long-term practical changes to Timmy's life? All they seem to do is fill Timmy's already terrible life with wacky and dangerous magical problems. Doesn't Timmy already have enough going on? What's even the point of Fairy Godparents if his life never gets better? None of it seems to make any sense. Unless Cosmo and Wanda are lying to us. What if we were to step back for a moment? Let's reconsider the criteria for receiving Fairy Godparents. Maybe Fairy Godparents aren't given to the kids with the most miserable lives. Maybe they're given to the kids who think they have the most miserable lives. Cosmo and Wanda actually are helping Timmy improve his life, but indirectly. Every time Timmy's wish goes wrong, he has to put in the work to undo it. Each resolved wish results in personal growth. Timmy wasn't given fairy godparents to make his life easier. Instead, Cosmo and Wanda are in his life to teach him how to solve his own problems. Fairy godparents have the responsibility to show their kids that life could be a lot worse, how to appreciate what they have, and how to solve their own problems without the direct use of magic. The children learn how to make their lives better through their own hard work. Fairy godparents just help them along the path of self-growth until they grow into well-adjusted adults. So it's not the saddest kids who get godparents. It's the kids who need to be taught that their lives aren't as bad as they think. To really drive this point home, let's look at Chester. Chester's life is way harder than Timmy's, and yet he never got fairy godparents. Why? It's simple. Chester is happy. He likes his life and appreciates what he has, even when in serious poverty. But what about the episode Fairy Idol, where he receives Norm the Genie as a godparent? What changed? In the episode, he exclaims, I'm the most miserable child on earth! For the first time in the show, he believes his life is terrible. As soon as he believes it, he's assigned a fairy godparent. Coincidence? Unlikely. Fairy godparents aren't given to children to help them wish their worries away. The real goal of Fairy World is to manipulate unhappy children to show them how to appreciate life and grow up. And that's the secret truth behind Fairly Odd Parents, hiding in plain sight all this time. If you like this theory, remember to click that like button to let me know, and hit that subscribe button for more theories about your favorite cartoons. You're asking again? Jeez, desperate much? Okay, so that theory is obviously wrong, and... Uh, stupid, because, um, huh, crap, that makes a lot of sense. Because, yeah, how many contrivances are there to put Timmy in situations he can't wish his way out of? It's like everything in the show is conspiring to teach Timmy a lesson all the time. Ah, oh, ugh, I hate to say it, but I think this dark theory about a kid's show might actually be true? Wait, hold on, what's so dark about this? The fairies are manipulating Timmy to stop being a whiny, selfish jerk. Sure, they're lying to him, but this idea is pretty wholesome, all things considered. What's with all the ominous editing cues? That's a big part of why these kinds of theories rub me the wrong way, I think. They're framed as uncovering some dark conspiracy, revealing something that'll blow your mind. The whole thing works in an eerily similar way to actual conspiracy theories. People who fall for conspiracy theories get addicted to having their minds blown, and care more about getting that feeling than finding the truth. Even if the fan theory has evidence to back it up, these feel more concerned with shocking you to get clicks than actually interrogating the facts. Isn't it so creepy and weird that this nostalgic thing from your childhood has this dark secret? Better watch and find out! Okay, no, I'm not just going to accept this theory as true with no pushback just because it made a decent amount of sense on the first pass. Hmm. A lot of the evidence for that theory was compelling, but I haven't watched Fairly Odd Parents since I was in high school at least. I don't remember everything that happens in the show. This video could very easily be lying about some of the details and I would have no way of knowing. I'm not going to accept what other people tell me blindly, or uh, what I tell myself blindly. I'm going to do my own research. Be right back. Okay, yeah, there was definitely some stuff that video was leaving out. It didn't lie, really, but it definitely bent the truth. Let's start with the claim that the rules prevent Cosmo and Wanda from undoing wishes. The video made it seem like that happened almost every episode. But I watched a bunch of episodes and read through wiki summaries of the first few seasons, and it doesn't actually happen that often. Let's look at the first season. Want to guess how many episodes have a plotline where the rules prevent Timmy from resolving the conflict? One. Just one. 
The first episode, where Timmy wishes to be an adult, and he loses his fairies because only kids have godparents. As for all the other episodes this season, they all have other reasons why Timmy can't undo the wish. In three of them, Timmy himself doesn't want to, despite Wanda's advice. In two of them, wishing wouldn't really solve the problem for various reasons. In two more, Timmy just never tries on wishing for unexplained reasons. One of them has the entire conflict in Fairy World with nothing to do with Timmy, one has all the fairies lose their magic, and three have Cosmo and Wanda physically separated from Timmy so he can't unwish them. Plus, across other seasons, there are other more common reasons like Cosmo and Wanda losing their wands or leaving Timmy alone for the day. And when it is the rules that interfere, it's almost always because of a well-established logical rule like you can't wish to win a contest or you can't wish for love. Yeah, there's the occasional contrivance, like the voice one, but it's actually a pretty remarkable feat of writing that the show was able to come up with so many varied and believable ways to generate conflict in a story with infinite magic. And just in case you were thinking something like, maybe Cosmo and Wanda lose their wands or get separated from Timmy on purpose, how do you explain moments like these? We gotta find Timmy before all the fairies explode! There are countless scenes with Cosmo and Wanda where Timmy is not present, where they're trying their absolute hardest to help him. If they were really lying to Timmy to teach him a lesson, wouldn't they drop the act here? And another thing the video lied about. It said that Chester got godparents after complaining about his life and saying he was the most miserable kid on Earth. But it wasn't just a change in attitude. His life actually did get worse in this episode. He lost his dad and his home. His life was legitimately really bad here. He very well could be the most miserable kid on Earth, at least by kids' cartoon logic. And the theory wondered why Timmy never wishes for a better babysitter, but he does, multiple times. But there's one thing above all else that makes this fan theory, and most fan theories, not true. The video brought up a few major logical inconsistencies with the show. But there's a different explanation for all these plot holes. It's not because of some dark secret. It's because this is a cartoon for kids, and cartoons for kids don't always have to be logical. To be clear, this is not me being a party pooper and going, it's just a cartoon, it's not that deep. I'm actually saying the opposite. I think when you make a theory that ignores the fact that you're talking about a work of fiction, you're refusing to fully engage with the work itself. Let me talk about a pair of terms that might be useful for this conversation. Watsonian and Doyleist. These two words are basically a fancier way of saying in-universe and out-of-universe, or if you've seen my other videos, diegetic and non-diegetic. Most elements of a fictional world have two reasons for being the way that they are. The Watsonian reason, the reason given within the world of the story, and the Doyleist reason, the reason why the creator of the story made it this way. They're called that because of Sherlock Holmes, as in how Dr. Watson would answer a question about Sherlock, versus how Arthur Conan Doyle would answer. So, for example, the Watsonian reason for why Mace Windu has a purple lightsaber in Star Wars is that he studied both the light side and the dark side of the Force, and that made his kyber crystal be different, yada yada. The Doyleist reason is that Samuel L. Jackson was like, I want a purple lightsaber, and George Lucas was like, okay. Good guys are, good guys are green and blue, bad guys are red. That's just the way it works. No purple left? You, you might get purple. And not everything in a story has a Watsonian answer. Sometimes stuff in a story is just never explained, it just is that way because the writer thought it made the story better. I bring all this up because a lot of fan theories are made by taking part of the story that doesn't have a Watsonian reason for existing and forcing one. Like in this fan theory, it's trying to justify why Timmy Turner has fairy godparents instead of some poor kid from a third world country who would need them more. But it's ignoring the Doyleist reason, that Timmy was created to be an audience surrogate, a normal American kid that the American kid audience can relate to. It's even in the theme song. Timmy is an average kid. Within the world of the show, Timmy has a bunch of big problems in his life. The Watsonian reason for him getting godparents is that these problems really do make him one of the most miserable kids in the world. Does that square with real world logic? No. But why does it have to? All things considered, it's a pretty minor leap in logic to make the cartoon premise work. I can't stand it when people go, What? A thing that doesn't make perfect sense? In a cartoon? That's not allowed. We have to find a way to make it make sense. Looking at stories this way is so limiting, and is even sometimes at odds with why the story exists and what it's trying to say. This fan theory proposes a possible Watsonian reason for why Timmy's wishes always go off the rails. That Cosmo and Wanda are doing it on purpose to teach Timmy a lesson. But what about the Doyleist reason? The writers created an average kid, Timmy, who lives a life roughly similar to the kids watching the show, and showed their audience what their lives might be like if they could wish for anything they wanted. 
They then showed the ways that wishing your problems away just creates even more problems, and each episode ends with a lesson learned. The writers make Timmy's wishes go wrong every episode in order to create a consistent theme of the show. Be careful what you wish for. You don't need to find an explanation for every logical inconsistency in a story. Sometimes a story needs to stretch reality to be thematically consistent and emotionally resonant. Can we talk about that more? The theming and intent of a story? Instead of framing everything as a secret, in-universe conspiracy? Look, I even found this blog post by John Negroni that talks about this exact idea in a less sensational way. The fairies are there to make sure Timmy stops needing them. He's explaining the themes of the show. You can do that, that's a thing you can do! I think that's a much more valuable conversation to be had about the show than bending over backwards to invent an in-universe explanation for all this. But then, you can't make a grabby thumbnail that says, DON'T TRUST COSMO AND WANDA! In general, I think the culture around media right now is very literal. Most conversations I see tend to revolve around in-universe lore, and things like themes and literary techniques can easily fall to the wayside. Maybe that doesn't seem like a big deal, but I get worried sometimes that people don't know how to critically engage with what they're watching and take too much at face value. I guess I'll end by saying that if you like reading or making fan theories, don't let me ruin your fun. It's cool and exciting to find new ways of looking at your favorite media. Just keep in mind that fiction is complex, and there's more to the story than just what's in the story. Okay, now I'm gonna go digging through the files on my computer. If there was one video in here, there might be more. <laughs> You're not supposed to be on those kinds of websites!